Okay, so the ZX Spectrum was the first computer that I ever owned and uh, it is such a good device. There were so many good games for it at the time. Uh, pretty inexpensive at the time as well. And uh, I really like the, the sort of form factor of having uh, a computer built into the keyboard. Now this is actually the recreated ZX Spectrum. So this is just a Bluetooth keyboard essentially and you can use it with anything. I'm using it with the Raspberry Pi 4 here. Uh, this is just ZX Spectrum games running in a web browser. So if I hit the back button, because obviously this doesn't have a mouse, you can see there's loads of games. I've covered this in previous videos, uh, but it is really, really good. Obviously we got the Raspberry Pi 400, which was kind of more a bit like an Amiga. Uh, really, really nice form factor, great device. But now, uh, and you've probably seen I've posted about this before, uh, this keyboard from Raspberry Pi Plastics uh, is a very similar size to a ZX Spectrum. It's actually a Bluetooth keyboard again, so you don't need to use it with all the casing and everything, but it actually fits a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero 2W. I'm not sure if it fits with the GPIO pins, I'm gonna find that out in a minute. Uh, and it also fits a Raspberry Pi 4. Now I bought this recently for 20 pounds and uh, I think it's really good value. Uh, so this is a Bluetooth keyboard, as you can see, uh, with all the usual connect and on and off uh, buttons. It is rechargeable and it charges up with a little, uh, not my favorite connection, but micro USB. Uh, it actually comes with a micro USB cable to charge it. There is also a tiny little fan to cool the Pi and also a little board in there, which I don't know what it does yet, but I'll find that out in a minute. So this bit looks like it's all finished uh, and it's actually got written on here, HDMI 1, HDMI 0, AV socket, uh, power USB-C, uh, Ethernet, and there's some USB symbols, and you can see there's cutouts for that. But there's also little micro USB connections here and a mini HDMI for the Pi Zero. And it looks like it just clips in. There are no extra screws or anything. I, I really like the design of this. Rubber feet as well, so when it's down, it's, uh, it's nice and stable. This bit has got pop-outs, so you can see there's a cover to cover up the cables, because if you have any cables going into your Pi, HDMI and uh, power and so on, then you can cover it up with that little clip on bit. And there's also some little blanking plates, because if you've got a Pi 4 in here, then maybe you wanna fill up these holes uh, for the Pi Zero. So let's see how it fits in. And also if the Zero fits in with GPIO pins. So this is the HDMI, so it goes upside down in here have to slot it in or it's touching the GPIO pins. Oh, but it, 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 it flips out. That's it, that's the Pi Zero seated in place. You can see the connections there. Uh, you can see it's not moving around and the GPIO pins, there's plenty of room so you can see they've thought of that. Uh, and so Pi 4, this is my one gig Pi 4, which will be absolutely fine for a ZX Spectrum emulator. Uh, so it's gonna have to go this way around. So is there not a clip on this one? Oh, here's a clip here, it looks like. So you can probably put in the little connectors first. Ah, there we go, that's better. That's fitting in. So I now have my Pi 4B in there as well. And that again, just clips into place, held into place nicely. Uh, so this bit, so I don't need, oh yeah, you do. That bit actually goes on here. Oh, so you do need to pop these bits out. Probably could use a little model knife for this if I had one near me. And these little bits as well. I don't know how they're supposed to break off. So in the picture, the molding on this is much thinner. So you can see that snaps out a lot easier. Whereas with mine, it's quite thick. So I think I'm gonna cut mine out with a knife. Okay, so I've cut those out with a sharp knife and that now leaves this, which I guess just pops on top. It looked like that bit goes at the back in the pictures. Okay, so you snap the back in first and then lever it down. Yeah, that's all in place. And this just pops in the top. So push that under the clip. And there we have it. So we've got the micro USB for the keyboard, which is still accessible for charging the keyboard. Uh, but Bluetooth keyboards usually last quite a long time on battery. We've got the Pi 4B and we've got the Pi Zero 2W and underside, uh, you've just got access to the Pi 4B in there, uh, and also the fan if we want some extra cooling. Yeah, maybe I do want to put the fan in. 
Okay, so if I clip these out and just pull this front end out, and this bit clips off again. So from the picture, they've just put the fan in like this, again, clipped into place with the sticker up, rooted it through here and into this little tiny board here, which way around with the red on the outside. So I've just plugged in my Pi to check if it was on the right pins because I couldn't see anything in the instructions. Uh, so it's on the very end pins here and my fan has started up and it doesn't seem that noisy. Um, this has dropped off, a little sticker and also this little black plastic thing, but it might have been me just being a bit too rough with it. It is quite fiddly with the fan, but let's unplug that. I've got no SD card in there, so it doesn't matter if I just unplug it. Uh, route the cable around the outside and just try and slot this in place. It's not the sort of thing I'd want to be putting in and taking out on a regular basis. But once it's in there, it's nice and snug and I probably would leave my one gig pie in there. Uh, although my zero I use a lot in various different things. But then the zero is much easier to put in and take out. So let's pop this back on without these two bits. It's always nice to have spares. So that bit clips in, that bit clips in, like that. I can put this on if I want, uh, which just covers the cables. So that just sort of slots in to make it a nice neat package. You can see the fan inside here now. And I don't need these because I've filled up all the holes with the connectors from the Zero and the Pi 4. So let's get this plugged in. I've got no boot media in there, but I can always boot from USB. Plug in the USB-C. And I could plug in my speaker as well. So all of that all comes out together nice and neat. Now that definitely looks like a cool piece of kit. Uh, with these three cables, it's pretty neat as well. Uh, so I can turn that on. I'm gonna have to use another keyboard to set it up initially. Little mouse keyboard dongle in and switch on. Okay, so that's all booted up. For now, I've still got my Logitech keyboard plugged in because I need to pair the Bluetooth. So let's click on Bluetooth. I'm gonna switch on the keyboard and press and hold the connect button. And you can see it's already gone into pairing mode. Let's do add a new device, Bluetooth keyboard. And next, if I start typing, so say I start typing imager, then yeah, you can see at the top it's come up with it. Yeah, that's all working. The fan is a little bit noisy for my liking, so I would maybe change that fan or not use a fan, maybe use a heat sink instead. But I think really I wanna use it with the Pi Zero 2W. I think that appeals to me more. So I'm gonna shut this down and boot it up with the Pi Zero 2W. Okay, so connectivity on this is all on this side. So we've got two micro USBs and we've got the HDMI mini. So I need an adapter to change that to HDMI mini. And more recently, I've been using this board with my Pi Zero 2W because it adds ethernet and also three USBs. Uh, so I really like that as uh, a solution and it also fits in a Pi 4 case, but I've shown that in a previous video. So with this, I'm going to use this one uh, and I hope I get it in the right. I think it's the one nearest the HDMI is the one you're supposed to use, uh, which is basically powers the Pi Zero 2W, but also provides USB uh, support as well so I can plug in a mouse and keyboard because this is Bluetooth and obviously needs setting up So I also use one of these which is a micro USB to USB-C These are brilliant. So this is a standard Pi 4 adapter uh, and that's going to add power to it So it's off at the moment But then I can plug in a Xbox controller and also my mouse keyboard adapter, which I don't know where it is here it is. I decided to do a YouTube short in the middle of doing this video uh, because of uh, where well, you'll see if you watch the YouTube short. Uh, so let's plug that one in. Just realized I don't think I've got an OS in the Pi Zero. So let's go with, let's try USB boot. So I've got an SD reader, which is just a USB device and an SD card. Let's pop that in there as well. Okay, so that's booted up fine. You can see the hub in the background and also Raspberry Pi OS running on the screen. But I think I'm gonna try this with RetroPie. So Bluetooth pairing worked fine. It found the keyboard. You can see I'm moving up and down on here. So let's go back and uh, I'm gonna restart RetroPie. 
at uh, quit and restart system because I've just put a USB stick in with a load of Spectrum games on it. I have got three videos on RetroPie which are worth watching if you're new to RetroPie which is sort of showing how to set it up and various different things. So this is Jetpack on the Spectrum and as you can see the keyboard's all working. Uh, I don't know what the keys are, ZX and PL, <laughs> a bit quick. Yeah, so that's fire. And this just seemed like a really fast game at the time. Uh, it still, you know, it still feels responsive. It's still, it's not easy. I mean, this is this is the easiest level. So you've got to drop the bits of the rocket down and avoid the other bits. And then we'll get some fuel in a minute as well. Actually, this isn't too hard because they don't seem to come up to the top. Some of the other enemies are much harder. So filling up with fuel. And the last one going in. I, th I can't remember, you had to go down to the rocket maybe. I'd forgotten that bit. Ah, here we go. Some of you may have noticed in the background, uh, this got delivered. It's a low profile ice tower cooler from 52Pi. I haven't tried it yet, uh, but they sent it to me in exchange for a review. So I'll try that in another video. Uh, but back to the keyboard, really impressed with it. I really like the way it looks. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get a Pi 4 in there, but uh, it, as long as you're not taking it out and putting it in on a regular basis, not a problem. I didn't mention earlier on, that it's got GPIO open access for both devices. Uh, I think it suits the Zero 2W better. Um, and on RetroPie, I did have a little bit of trouble with Bluetooth keyboards, but when you Google it, the Bluetooth keyboard support isn't great. Uh, it's dependent on the emulator, and uh, the emulator that I was using for Spectrum was absolutely fine with it and worked brilliantly. Uh, and obviously, if you're going to use it for an operating system, all the operating systems that work with the Pi would support Bluetooth keyboards. I can't think of one that doesn't. It's more just the retro gaming side that maybe is a bit less compatible. Usually at this point, I say uh, thanks to the company for sending it to me, uh, but I actually bought this one with my own money because it was only 20 pounds. I thought it was actually quite a good deal and uh, I am impressed with it. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.